This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to demonstrate the one inch swing away binder from Sailrite. This binder attachment sews binding on the edge of a fabric application perfectly. Included in this demonstration video will be a few tips for sewing binding through this attachment that will make your project come out great. If you'd like to see the installation video, click the link at the top right. After installing the Sailrite one inch swing away straight binder, all you need to do is insert a one inch binding into the mouth of the binder. You'll find a large selection of pre-made bindings at the Sailrite website. We're using the Sailrite Ultrafeed LSZ1 sewing machine. We'll position the needle to the right so we can move our stitch closer to the edge of the binding. We always like to hold the tails when we create our first two stitches, and then we like to sew approximately four inches of binding to check our tension. If it looks good on the top side and looks good on the bottom side, you're ready to sew. Raw edges of fabric typically don't look good, and they may unravel. Installing a binding on the edge of a fabric assembly or just a plain fabric makes it look gorgeous. Here we've sewn one inch into the binding and now we'll insert our fabric application into the mouth of the binder to sew the binding on the edge. The stitch will always be perfectly straight as the binder feeds and folds the binding in half over the edge of your fabric assembly. The one inch binder folds a one inch binding so that the bottom and top side are about a half inch in width. As you feed the fabric assembly into the binder, you need to be assured that the fabric is pushed well up into the mouth or the exiting point of the binder. Many sewers concentrate on the entry point of the binding, in other words, towards the back of the binder, making sure the fabric is pushed up there, but that is incorrect. The entry point of the binder is canted or tilted so that the binding feeds into the binder without kinking. And because of that slant, if you're paying attention to the entry point of the binding and not the exiting point as you push your fabric assembly into the fold, it will not be pushed all the way up into the fold of the binding. So as an operator, you don't have to pay attention at all to the binding. The binder does that. All you have to pay attention to is the exiting point of the binder and pushing your fabric assembly well into the fold at that point. Take a look at this binding. It's folded beautifully over the edge of this Sunbrella fabric. We'll cut the end of this binding flush with the edge of the fabric, and then we'll sew another leg of binding at the opposite edge, 90 degrees to the first. When we start sewing, we'll do a little reversing to lock our stitch in place. The swing away binder moves backwards as we do reverse and then back forward again. As we sew over the previous binding, we will do some reversing there as well to lock our stitch in place. Then we will cut off the excess and use a hot knife like the Sailrite Edge Hot Knife to seal the edge of the Sunbrella binding. The Sailrite one inch swing away binder swings away. So after you're done installing your binding, sometimes you can just leave the binder attached to the bed of the sewing machine. Just swing it out of the way and sew your normal sewing applications. Then when you need it again, swing it back into position. What about sewing with a zigzag stitch? Well, we're going to place the Ultrafeed LSZ1 in a zigzag stitch and sew about a 4 millimeter stitch length in both forward and reverse. Again, we've fed the binding into the mouth of the binder attachment and sew an inch, and then we feed our fabric assembly in. Do a little bit of reversing at the beginning to lock our stitch in place after sewing in forward, and then we just check to make sure that the fabric assembly is being fed in towards the exiting point of the binder, even while going around this curve. Notice that we are concentrating on that exiting point. As long as that fabric is pushed into the mouth of the binder at that exiting point, it will sew the binding on perfectly. At the end of our sewing, we do some reversing, sewing off of the fabric assembly slightly. That way, when we cut our binding, the stitch goes all the way to the edge. Then we use a hot knife to seal the binding again. Only Sailrite binders feature a stop that prevents the swing away arm from accidentally feeding into the presser feet when sewing heavy fabric assemblies. 
Here is a curtain enclosure panel with clear vinyl window material and several layers of sunbrella fabric along the edge called facing. The edge of this curtain has been left raw. It needs the finishing touch of a binding installed. So we're going to use the one inch swing away binder to sew that binding in place. As we sew this heavy assembly in place, you can see how that stop prevents the swing away arm from bouncing or moving into the presser feet as this heavy fabric assembly is pushed into the binder. At the end, we do some reversing and the binder is allowed to travel backwards for the reverse stitch. That's the beauty of a swing away binder. And our binding looks great. Because we were concentrating on feeding this fabric assembly at the exiting point of the binder, our assembly is pushed well into the fold of the binding. Sewing inside turns like on this scalloped edge can be difficult with a straight angle binder. As long as the curves are gradual, a straight angle binder like this can sew them, but inside curves can be a little bit challenging. As you can see, this outside gentle curve is rather easy to sew. But on inside curves, like when we're approaching this inner curve, we have to pull the swing away binder away and basically feed that portion on with a little help from our hands. On inside curves, you can see the fabric assembly wants to be pushed well into the mouth of the binder and it would kink up. That's why we move the binder away and still use the binder to help fold the binding in place. But we have to guide the fabric assembly and our binding on with our fingers as we sew the inside curve. Again, when we reach the outside curve, no problem. We can push the binder back into its feeding position and continue to sew. Here we are reaching another inside curve and we're going to use our fingers and the binder and help to fold the binding but yet hold the binding with my fingers since the binder is pushed so far away. We've also installed the binder on a different sewing machine, the Sayrite Fabricator. And here we're going to sew a stamoid binding. This is a vinyl binding. Now vinyl is a little bit sticky, so sometimes you have to help it through the binder with a screwdriver as shown here. Here again, we'll sew one inch of the binding and then we'll feed our fabric assembly through the mouth of the binder. Here we're sewing a vinyl fabric called stamoid top. The same process, just concentrate on the exiting point of the binder, being assured that your fabric assembly is pushed well inside the fold of the binding. You may be asking, will the Sayrite one inch swing away binder fit on my sewing machine? Most sewing machines have two threaded holes to the right of the presser foot. Those threaded holes are for attachments. If the hole closest to the presser foot is between 1 and 3 16 and 2 and 3 16 inch away from your presser foot, then it is likely that the binder may fit your sewing machine. Order the Sayrite 1 inch swing away binder today, exclusively sold at Sayrite.